My name is Nancy Souter. I would like to tell you about two pieces that I have in this year's Clay International Exhibit at the Workhouse Art Center. Lately I've been making work with themes of community, ceremony, and ritual. I most enjoy making pieces with a devotional or ceremonial aspect, but because I don't live in a culture that's steeped in rituals, I decided to create a fictional culture, and now I make the artifacts and accoutrements for their traditions. So the first piece I would like to tell you about is called Dar Alus. Dar Alus means to give light or to bring to light. They believe that the first time that phrase was used to refer to a woman giving birth was in a sermon in the 1600s which referred to the Virgin Mary bringing forth the light of the world. I've always thought it such a beautiful expression. So in the land of Samavesha, when a woman is in, is in labor, her friends and family will take a large bowl, fill it with water, and float candles on top. It's their responsibility to keep those candles burning for the duration of the labor until the child is born. The purpose is to be a beacon to light the way for the unborn spirit into the world of form. It also provides for them a sense of community, and it gives them um, a way to contribute during this time of waiting. The imagery on the outside of this bowl is, uh, represents the world that the child will be born into and will become a part of. It represents our connection with nature that we sometimes feel disconnected from. It represents a um, world that is healthy and abundant with life and the animals are peering out in anticipation of this new life, this new light that is coming into the world. The bowl is made of a stoneware clay and painted with underglazes. The um, details are added with a technique called sgraffito. If you're not familiar with that, it's where color is painted on the surface of clay and then a um, tool is used to carve back through, revealing the clay underneath. So it's a way to add um, very fine lines and intricate details that would be difficult to do with a brush. And because I use a dark clay body, when I carve lines, they um, are either dark brown or a very dark terracotta earth color. The interior of the bowl is glazed with a crystalline glaze. Um, the purpose of that was to create a um, surface that was ethereal and otherworldly to represent the realm of spirit that this um, child would be coming from. So the next piece that I would like to share with you is called, simply called Ceremony, and I would like to tell you a story. In the not-so-distant land of Samavesha, with its rolling hills and its deep forest, its mountains and waterfalls, and its endless sky. There once lived a leader, although she would not have called herself that. She would probably not have even said teacher. I think she would have preferred friend. Her name was Eileen, and gradually, in a meandering sort of way, she became known throughout the land. People were just drawn to her, and she to them, probably because she had a very um, just a very kind, gentle way of moving through life. She was in love with all living things. Even the tiniest insect was wondrous, magical to her. A whole universe she would find in that one small thing. For the people of Samavesha, she would all um, often leave treasure notes, um, poems, truths, bits of ancient wisdom. The children, as you might imagine, thought this was the greatest thing. In the forest, sometimes, they would find a note tucked into a tree or perhaps stashed somewhere in the marketplace. And even if they were too young to understand the meeting or perhaps too young to even read the flowing script, they would be filled with joy and they would run to the others. I found one, I found one. She would smile. She never had children of her own, but what a natural way she had with them. And for people of all ages, she was a guide when their path was uncertain and she was a companion if their journey was difficult. For years she was adored and then one day she called the people together to tell them the sad news that she would not be with them for much longer, not in this world. Although it never seemed so in truth, 
She had been old for a very long, long time. But she told the people that she would always be near them and that if they listened deeply, they would still hear her gentle guidance. It was as close as their own heartbeat and as abundant as bird songs. On the night that she died, with great sadness, they took her body down to the river. You see, it was their tradition to place the body in a boat that would drift down the river to the sea beyond their lands. So they built a fire on the shore of the river and a funeral pyre in the altar in the boat. They placed her body on the lavender-laden pyre and the river gently lulled the boat from their hands. As the light from the boat drifted away, the people sang their sacred songs and they told memories of their beloved leader to each other as gifts, as one by one, they placed a symbolic item in the fire. And it is said that just, just before the boat faded from their view, two birds landed, one on the bow and one on the stern. The people of Samavesha still listen closely, sometimes, if they are very still. Poems, bits of wisdom come in their thoughts sometimes into their dreams, and when they do, they leave treasure notes for the others to find. And it became part of their passage ceremony to make a small replica of that boat with two birds and a small altar. And on the altar, they would burn one by one love notes to the one who had died. This piece is made of stoneware with underglaze and wax, copper wire for the chains, porcelain for the lanterns, and handmade cotton lace. It is said by the shamans that we must dream a new dream into reality, into this world. I hope you'll join me because I think the time is now. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you will visit the Clay International Exhibit. You can find out more at www.workhousearts.org. Follow me on Instagram at the Clay Lotus and visit my website, nancysouderclay.com. Thank you so much.